Welcome to the Blessed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson, and this is Blessed. And I'm here to help you transcend being blessed. That is, you know, it's more than a hashtag. It really is. Um, being blessed is all about mindset. And guess what? I have a really, really special, a special, special episode for you today. Now, you guys know I'm broadcasting on WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate. If you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, I need you to go to www.wytv7.org and hit the donate button. We are in April and April showers bring May flowers. As I remember that when I was little, that's all I used to say. So we are celebrating April with showers of knowledge, okay? Every week in April, I'll be bringing you some guests and we will give you tips or life hacks. You know, just little showers of knowledge to help you through your day and through your year and you know, through your life, hopefully. And this month, and I'm kicking it off with my sisters, Rosalind Riley and Sherry Tolson. They have been here before. Y'all know my family is amazing. We, because of COVID, we've been um, having family dinner every Sunday. Every Sunday since COVID, we've been having a great time on Zoom. And a lot of our conversations end with us talking about mindset. So I was like, well, we need to talk about mindset. I wanted to do it on Easter Sunday, but we got into doing a whole lot of stuff, but we are here now. And welcome, Roz and Sherry, to Blast. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So let's get it started because we only have, you know, probably about 25 minutes now. Okay. Y'all know we can talk. So, yeah, because y'all, our, our family dinners last for about four hours. <laughs> We do spend like at least 30 minutes watching a TV show together, but still, that's a long time. Um, let's talk about mindset. Y'all know I love, love, love talking about mindset. Roz is actually a hairstylist. So if anybody has ever gone to the hair, you know, to the beauty shop, y'all know that's where y'all get all y'all counseling from. That's my sister Roz. She, she counsels people all the time on mindset. Sherry is actually a teacher. So she, and now, but you're not a teacher anymore. What's your position now? I'm the behavior improvement specialist. Behavior improvement specialist. And y'all already know when you're talking about behavior, you're talking about what? Mindset, Mindset. definitely. Right. So we are all in this thing. We all are, you know, helping people with their mindset. So we're going to give some little mindset hacks. And, and here's the thing, just because we help people don't mean we don't need to help ourselves. That's how we're able to help people. Don't y'all agree? I think so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because we have to, because I told somebody about mindset. It was like, I said, it's like being an alcoholic. They was like, huh? I was like, yep. (laughs) I said, every day, you got to make up your mind. Every day, you got to make up your mind. You can't say, oh, today, this is how I believe. Because guess what? Something going to happen tomorrow, baby, that's going to say, you really believe that? You really believe that? Right. Every day you got to be like, Mm-mm, this is what I believe. What y'all think? I think what you're saying is it's right on target and goes into that um, affirmations, right? Mm-hmm. You have to make up your mind every day, which means you have to tell yourself every day. Right. What are you expecting? Who are you? How do you do things? Whatever it is that you need to work on, you need to write it down and you need to focus on it. Right, right. Roz, what, what do you think? Absolutely. Look, you you know, biblically saying it says write the vision and make it plain. Right, right. You Other than that, you just got a dream. And faith right. without works is what? Dead. Yeah. Anything right. you, you, you put out, you got to be willing to put the work into it. And sometimes you need some motivation to do what it is, is not that you don't want to do it. Right. You need some motivation to keep you on track. That's all it is. And that mindset is keeping you on track for what it is that you say you want. Yes. 
So I'm going to give my first mind hack or mindset hack, whatever you believe. And so my first, the one I, what helps me, and I have the shirt on today. It says, God is good and so am I. That's my number one mindset hack for myself is because I believe that God is everywhere equally present force of good. And that means it's surrounded me and it's also inside of me. And if I can believe that, that's the truth that I, I form my mindset on. You know, that's the belief that I, I do because then anything that goes against that, I just have to go back to that. So anything negative, people are like, well, everything's not good. I was like, no, everything's not good. But guess what? All things work for my good because I'm surrounded in good. And I had to believe, I, but it is really important that I had to believe that I am good and I deserve good. It's, you know, I can say God is good all the time, but if I didn't believe that I was good and I deserve good, it wouldn't matter. So that's like my first, my first lifestyle hack, my first mindset hack that I'm throwing out there for y'all. Catch, catch that, catch that right there that you are good and you deserve good and teach your children. Oh, oh, I forgot to do my little thing. We are sponsored by Tolson's Publishing and we have a new book, Ren's Affirmation, God is good and so am I. Y'all like that shameless flow? Anyway, <laughs> but, <laughs> so that was, my, that was my tip number one. Anybody else wanna go with their tip, their mindset hack or? Okay, well, I'll go next. I just finished my master's program at GCU. Yay! Yay! It took me a while to get through. And, and this isn't the first school that I've gone to and pursuing the master's. And it's not that it's so hard, but my mind wasn't set to a place where I could get through it because I tend to try to make things more difficult than they are. So my mantra to myself was something is better than nothing. Oh. Because for me, I have a spirit of avoidance. <laughs> I will avoid something that seems like it's too difficult for me. And when I tell myself something is better than nothing, that gives me permission to go in and to do it and not get down on myself about it, but to be proud that I put forth an effort. Mm, mm, that's good. I like that. And I, I cause putting forth the effort that, cause a lot of people, they look at, Oh, the thing to get to the finish line is, it seems like it's so hard, but it's like, you know what, what they say about this, like how you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. It's that something is better than you doing a little something. Oh, with the weight loss thing, y'all. I actually lost 17 pounds though since <laughs> January, <laughs> middle of January. Since January. Oh since my gosh, that's so, huge. Yeah. So, but what I, it was kind of what you were saying. Something is better than nothing. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna drink 64 ounces of water every day. And that, uh, so it was like, okay. And then, you know what? The days where I may have got to 59 and didn't quite get 64, but I, I didn't get down on myself. So I was like, something's better than that. And, then, and, then, and this is going to sound gross though, but somebody told me that you look at your urine. If your urine is not bright yellow, you, have, you are fully hydrated. So then I'll be like, oh, well, it was okay. But that didn't mean I went going the next day, I went and go do the 64. And now I'm up to um, doing 96 ounces because I was like, I'm pushing it. But it, I use that mindset hack that you have, Sherry. Something is better than nothing. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, <laughs> Roz, what's your mindset hack? Look, you started on mine already. It, mm -hmm. it, it is, can you eat an elephant? Yes, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. One bite at a time. Thinking about one bite at a time, it takes away looking at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we look at the whole picture at one time, it yeah. just overwhelms us and shuts us down. It mm -hmm. stops us. But when you look at one bite at a time, mm -hmm. then you can put it into small pieces 
where it's no longer overwhelming to you and you can actually see yourself accomplishing a bite. Yes. You can accomplish a bite and get it done. Yeah. Before you know it, you at the end of the journey, which is uh, what is Sherry just said that about her, her masters and putting forth the effort. You have to put forth the effort to do the bites. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to. For me, I, I had started my uh, CBT uh, certification. Then I let the next shiny toy get in the way and I stopped <laughs> doing my classes. And then it started popping in my head. God started showing it to me again. And I said, oh, okay, I need to, I need to complete that, don't I? And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my goodness, all them hours I got left. And so I started telling myself, I can eat an elephant. Yes, I can. One bite at a time. I can finish this certification. Yes, I can. Okay, wait a minute. One Are you doing a power a pose right now? <laughs> or did you just do a power pose? I did, because that's the way I, I felt. Talk to myself. So you yes, do that. You I do was talking pose. to myself. Yes. Can I eat an elephant? Yes, I can. Can I complete this certification? Yes, yes I, can. I can. One session at a time. And I made a post, mm -hmm. put it up on the door of my office. I put it up on the on the mirror of my bathroom. Mm -hmm. I went in there, can I? Yes, I can. It, it kept it in front of me, kept me on to it. Then I start asking myself, is what I'm doing right now gonna help me complete my certification. Oh, so I was holding myself accountable. Yes, yes. That's that's putting forth the effort. I'm I was about to say that's the effort. effort. Yeah, that's putting forth the effort. And so I, I intentionally mm -hmm. had signs. Is what you're doing right now. See, and that's that closer. word right there. Intentional. Intentional. Yeah, that yes. is a huge word when yes. you talk about mindset being intentional. You know what? And I do want to say something to everybody, like. There is no right or wrong when it comes to, to, for me, I personally believe there is no right or wrong mindset. It, cause you can have a mindset like that, that says I can eat whatever I want and you just eat, eat, eat. That's fine. But if the intention is to lose weight, then you want to change the mindset. Not that it's wrong or it just doesn't serve what your intention is. So we, it, I'm, that's another thing, like get out of that whole, it's either right or wrong. No, it is not right or wrong. It's just maybe not right for you at this moment because it doesn't serve the intention that you have. Like, I mean, some people are like, well, there are some things that's wrong. Okay, but instead of being so judgmental with ourselves, cause that is, ooh, when we judge ourselves, <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to do anything because then we we start feeling like we're worth worthless and it, it's not gonna work anyway because I'm worthless or I, nothing works for me and yada yada yada. You get into this whole negative downfall spiraling and you can't get yeah. nothing done. We are right, what that's our biggest critic. Yes. yes, what that's called is a foothold. You when you when you open up that door, you open up a, a foothold for Satan to use the things that naturally cause you to get down on yourself, to mm -hmm. to shut down and to speak those things into your life. That's mm -hmm. that foothold. And yes, and then, we are our worst, we are our worst critics. And let me say, in, in the in the um in the term that they use um outside of the church, they call it a confirmation bias. So okay. what happens is you start finding everything that that says, yes, you were right about that negative belief. Mm -hmm. Like, uh-huh, see, told you, because something happened and you'd be like, mm-hmm, that's why it happened, because you, you're not worthy of that good. You such as that. And I told you, when something shiny and new come and get you all past, see, you just can't do this because it's, it, you start everywhere you look, you get confirmation that that negative belief or that belief that doesn't serve you, not negative, that belief that doesn't serve your intention, you start seeing it everywhere. Look, and you that's why it's so important. When Ross was talking, I heard her say, oh, I wrote it down. I put it up. It was there. Like when I go in my bathroom, I got scripture right there that I can read that will help me to make it through my day. Mm -hmm. Because when I go to work, I'm not looking for joy. I bring joy with me. And when I come and I'm bringing joy with me, goodness and mercy follow. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You better preach the word. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. <laughs> you know what? Listen, let me tell y'all. Let me share because when you were talking about this next shiny thing, so everybody knows I'm a writer. And being a writer, a creative person, period, it was songwriters, like even to like everybody has a notebook or they have some papers everywhere that they start on something, an idea. And then they get to it and they don't finish and they go to the next thing. That's why you can have people that write songs. They have like tons of songs because they just like leave it. Oh, or my favorite, my nephew, Roz's son, who is an artist. And he drew, a, he, he painted a painting. He's painted a picture and I wanted it. I was like, I want that picture. He was like, oh, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. And he just leave it there and he wouldn't go back. Every now and then he would go back to it and paint a little more and then he just put it aside. And I was just like, I'm taking my picture. <laughs> I was like, he was mad at me too. Cause I took it to California. I, I took it from Illinois and took it to California. He was like, but I wasn't finished. I was like, yeah, you were. I, this is how it was good for me because it was mine. So it's good. But then I made him come to California and sign his name because he hadn't even signed his name. <laughs> but I would say it to say that I have like books and screenplays and all this that, that all started, but I haven't finished them. And then sometimes I get down on myself. I'm like, why haven't you finished it? But then, you know, I started saying it's it because it wasn't time yet. You know what? It just wasn't time yet. Cause I had to get out that negative spiral. Like it just wasn't time yet. So when it's time, I'll go back to it. Cause, oh, guess what? I finished the screenplay for Anita Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. Look, and you mentioned something earlier, Ray, where you said all things work together for my good. And that's absolutely true. I'm, I'm one of those people that look for the silver lining in, in, in things. When you say bad stuff, there's, there, it's, it's, really, it's really not bad because it does work together for mm -hmm. our good. The, a lot of the things that we consider negative that happened to us in our, in our lives helped form us into who we are today. Mm -hmm. I, 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 had, I was exposed to a lot of death mm -hmm. early growing up and dealing with that, dealt with that really, really early in my life. Now I help people with grief. I got a grief support group that I facilitate once a month, helping people through their grief processes. Had I not had all of that grief going on and having to deal with things so early on in my life, I wouldn't have been shaped to be able to work with people on that level. From, it, it doesn't matter what type of grief they have, and from grief of a loss of a job or grief of this, I understand grief and and how to help them through that that process. Yeah. So every everything that we've gone through shapes us for who we are right now. And sometimes the things that we haven't finished, we haven't gotten, we haven't had all the experiences yet that we need mm. in order for us to uh, complete those. Processes. That's good. That was good. That was good. Sherry, so I just want to talk real quick about what you do, because um, when you started that job, I still don't know the term, and you just told me the term. What's the term again? Behavior Improvement Specialist. Behavior Improvement Specialist. That's because I, every, every school don't, district don't have it. They probably should, because that's a great title for Some it. people call it a behavior interventionist, but my principal, oh. my principal's a little different. She's like, no, because this is what I want you to focus on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are intervening in this behavior, but they need to know that we're expecting some improvement. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's great. When we were talking about when you first started, how you have, you know, you you set an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and you talk a little bit about that because I think all parents, this is a great hack for your kids and their mindset. Share the atmosphere that you created. Okay, so... When the students come into my office, they know that it's a safe place, mm -hmm. that they can talk to me about whatever they need to talk about, mm -hmm. because it's not going to go any further than that. So that atmosphere is safe. But they also know what my goals are. My goals are on the wall. Mm -hmm. My goals are that they decrease disruptive behavior increase time on task in class and learn skills that help them throughout life. 
Mm. So as they're down there, we're not just just talking. We're talking about ways to help them to deal with situations that they're going through. Because a lot of times when stuff happens, oh, it's because they did this or because they did that. Okay, but has anybody else ever done that before? And how did you react when they did it? So is it what they did or who it was who was doing it? Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to deal with the underlying factors of it because it's not usually the what they did. It's the how I feel about them and they did it. Right. So right. you're not in trouble because they did something. You're in trouble because of how you reacted to how they did or what mm-hmm. they did. Mm-hmm. It was the reaction that got you in trouble, right. not their action. And I tell them, yeah, you can do things mm-hmm. even when it's hard. Just keep working on it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. But don't think it's going to stop being hard. It's still going to be hard. Right. But you're going to be more capable of doing the hard thing the right. more you work on it. You know, Wait, so I just need to make sure that the parents really heard that. So the first thing you said to create an atmosphere to change your mindset of your child is to make it a safe space for them to be able to tell you anything. Right. And a way to do that is to not judge them. That's going to be huge. As parents, it's hard not to say that that's bad or that's wrong. It's very hard. And sometimes we have to, even if we say it, then we just have to kind of go back and say, you know what? I'm sorry. I made a mistake. This is what I should have said. That's okay. You can tell you, let your kids know that you don't have all the answers and you don't always do things right. The second thing you said you had expectations. You got to have expectations for your kids. And then you said you wrote the expectations so they could always see it. So I'm like, a lot of people like, write the expectations for your kids so they know. Even though that one commercial, let me tell y'all, I hate the guy Coke commercial. That commercial, when you say you turn it into your parents, I hate that commercial because it just, it, he stepped on all my toes. But the one thing he did when she had the little, the plaque, live, love, laugh, he said, do we really need that? She was like, yeah, she's like, he said, no, and he threw it away. I'm like, oh my God, we need that. We need that the same way. I was like, like, what's wrong with that? We need that. (laughs) You need a reminder. Y'all see what behind me on mine, it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That let everybody, this is the foyer of my house when people walk through the door. Even if you don't live here, it's just letting you know that this is how we live in this house. You can turn around and go back out if you want to, but I'm just saying, but as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. And that might mean different things to different people. I'm not saying that, you know, we holier than now and we not earthly, any earthly good, but it's just letting people know the kind of heart in, in this house. I see, Raj, you got one, too, up there. I do, yeah. Celebrate life and make today amazing. And I want to add one thing to what Sherry said real quick. Mm-hmm. What All of what you were doing and all of what you were teaching are things that we as adults didn't get a chance to get those tools, learning how to get to the root of what's mm-hmm. going with you instead yeah. of people dealing with the symptoms of it teaching them to get to the root and you teaching those valuable lessons as they get adults, they won't have a lot of the hangups that uh, uh, us adults have right. or had and trying to learn those lessons. So I applaud you and hope more in your position, take on that, that stance to teach those tools to them so that they can have them forever. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. And you know, I was just sister helped me to help some kids. I was listening to them in their class and I, I just came and I was like, can I tag in for a minute? Cause, cause I, I need to interject here because the kids were complaining about their little brothers and little sisters and how they get on their nerves and they want to hit them in the head and all of that. And I told them, I said, you know what? I said, I have to come and I have to speak for the younger siblings on this one. And I need y'all to know this and I need you to take it to heart. They are bothering you because they look up to you, they love you, and all they want is to be with you. Mm-hmm. So when you when they start getting on your nerves, I'm going to need you to understand that it's because 
they want to be with you so much. And they were like, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, as much as they're getting on your nerves, it's because they love you and they look up to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if they didn't, they be out bothering somebody else. <laughs> because if we, I have to say this, it's because me and Sherry, when we were younger, would follow Roz around. Roz would leave and go somewhere and we would, we would be sitting in there trying to figure out, okay, we heard her say this. Well, I think I heard her say this. And we would walk around East St. Louis until we found our sister. And, and we would show I'm up I'm trying not parties. to comment because we don't have time for uh, this next segment that y'all trying to go into. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sherry, remember that time we went to that the house that's like right across from the park, that big house, and they had a barbecue back there. And we we got there and we was like at the at the gate, was like, I think our sister's there. And they were like, Oh, your Roz and sisters, come on in. And we was all happy. We went back there with all us teenagers and stuff. Roz was so mad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I was able to help them in their mindset because they were thinking that they just trying to be pets. Yeah. But no, they're not trying to be pests. They yeah. look up to you. It's because you are great to them. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. We only got five minutes left. See, I, the time go by so fast. Yes, I have a it does. I hope I'm. I know that we have helped some people. <laughs> we have helped some people because we gave them some great ways, some tools to, um, you know, help with their mindset. But I just want all everybody out there to know that it is not easy to change or to elevate a mindset because what we talked about, the footholds, the confirmation, by things are going to happen to remind you or to, to remind you about how you used to think. That's why you got to put it on the walls. That's why you got to have some tools. That's why you got to have sometimes changing friends so you can have people that's telling you the different things in your head. And it's a daily, daily, daily work. It's a daily work, no matter who you are. T.D. Jakes himself, I'm sure, got some days when he ready to cuss people out and he is <laughs> and he ready to give up. And I use him because he's like, you know, T.D. Jakes. But everybody go through it. So we got to go. Roz, how can people um, find you if they need to get in touch with you? They can contact me on RoslynRiley.com as well as Facebook, Rosalind Riley mm-hmm. at Facebook, Roz Ram. And the Instagram is Miss Roz. Okay. It's and Sherry, Roz. you don't even go. Do you get on social media, Sherry? <laughs> I think that Instagram you, you is are there. on there, but do you get on there? I do not. We gonna work on her, y'all. We gonna work on her because she has so much to give. I'm we working on her. We working. <laughs> I work one on day at a time. Chapter books out online a little bit. I'm gonna have to do more with that and enjoying reading with people. Yeah. Oh, let me add this, guys. Sherry talked about a safe place. Make yourself a safe place. When you mess up, do not beat yourself up. Make yourself a safe place. Instead of beating yourself up, say, "Okay, thank you for reminding me." Let's get back mm-hmm. on track. What, yeah. what, what do I need to do? And I know I'm saying talk to yourself. Yes, talk yes. to yourself. Talk That's to the yourself. voice that you hear most. Let that be the one that speak life into you. Don't yeah. wait for somebody else. You yeah. speak life into you. Be a safe place for yourself and allow yourself the opportunity to start wherever you are. Not beat yes. yourself up. Okay. Yes. Self-talk is very important, but I will tell y'all this. If you ever get, um, if they ever, the police ever come and ask you if you talk to yourself, please say no. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> with all that said, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for being <laughs> here. Remember what God has done for others. He will do the same thing for you. Guys, you. be blessed until next week. See you. Bye. 80% of women will develop a pelvic health condition at some point in their lives. There is relief. There is hope. The Pelvic Floor Store, your resource for personal health.